I will start with some questions for you. If I tell you that you, your, yourself, is not your real self, or that you don't know yourself, yes, I know that's confused, but I will explain it later, or that you never were and never will be yourself, again. So, I will start this presentation with a little story. As I was a kid, I was had this philosophical thoughts about why I am doing the stuff I am doing, why I am studying in the Swiss school, why I am my DCC. Um, dealing with destiny is not something that anyone could answer, so why would a little kid answer things about destiny? That doesn't make sense. So I gave up with these ideas about philosophy things and started to think about my person, what I am. It seems to be easy to think what we are, but it is not. Sad story here, it has been 10 years since I started with this thought, and I don't know what I am. Yay, surprise. <laughs> so, this annoys me because I am not alone. And you may think that this is not true because we are the better ones to understand we. But it, it is not a dead centerly that we as being the better ones to determine who we are, that we understand ourselves. So this is why I started to reflect about why exactly people don't know themselves and at the same time they're full that they know. So I will start with you. In this case, this is me. And I started to think about the influences in building people and personality. So the first thing, here you have society and media. It sometimes annoys me to think about society because you have two options. Accept it, and when you try to change it, you get frustrated because people are difficult. That is a fact. Or you get to the forest and live alone. But I don't think this is an option for us. I don't think you. But I, should, I like to live in a society because it is our nature. We are made to live in a group. And it is also natural for us to start to observe what the society is doing, to observe what the society likes or not, and also try to get its approval when doing something. And it is obvious a problem, because sometimes we follow what the society was, was and forgot about our personal likes. It also happens with media, for example. We have Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I don't think you use Facebook because Facebook is old, whatever. <laughs> but when you use those social medias, it is common that we have a standard, perfect lives. No one wants to show how you're in, at your sofa just watching TV and you're bored and not at a party. So what we post on our stories when you are at parties, when you are happy. And this is a problem because when you try to give in, on, on Instagram or on Twitter, your feelings, people judge you and say you're needy or you just want attention. It is pretty common and sad, of course. So why we do that? Why we deny others feelings? So continue with <laughs> the things I thought. I realized that our friends and family also helps to build who we are. I'll, I will start with friends, damn friends. The ones that your parents guilt when they discover you smoke weed, for example. We accept when we, we are receiving this influence of the group, what they have to give us. And sometimes it is drugs, a curse. But we have to realize that we accept it because we want to be part of a group, because we don't want to be isolated or the boring ones for not using drugs or doing something. So when your parents ask things as, 
If your friend jumps from the bridge, so you will, the answer will be probably yes. And then I started to think about my family, which involves also uprings, but just start with family. It occurs in the same way as it occurs with our friends, but instead of we wanting to belong to a group, we follow what our, our family says to us because we don't want to disappoint them. I know this is sad, but sometimes we don't we disappoint our family and we get not happy with that. So this is why they give us advice. We have to take it into consideration because they took care of us, they helped us when we need, so we don't want them to feel sad for what we are doing. So getting deep, deep inside the things that influence you, we have our upbrings. It could be schools, institutions, but I prefer to mention our parents. Since we are children, our parents teach us about being strong, not crying, and this is not good. And as we grow up, we get, we are now, in my case, I'm a teenager, and our parents start to say things as, I know this epoch is difficult. This time of teenager is difficult. You're going to act l as an animal and you're going to be confused, I know, but I'll accept it if you get angry. But uh, of course, I will be angry at you and we will fight every week. But this is not true. We are taught that teenager times is, a, is um, how can I explain it? Is a time, of course, that <laughs> you are getting normally anger and then that's normal, but this is not. This, is, this occurs mainly because we are thought that our feelings are not worthy. Having feelings is not worthy. So this is why we don't have connections with our attitudes and our personality, connecting them with emotions. So this is why teenagers are so confused. We are in a time that we have problems, we get in love, I don't know, that's not my case, but whatever. Um, you get anger at everything, so it is a difficult time. And you don't have to deal with a teenager as it is a no normal time that you get anger. But you have to deal with this teenager with love and attention because this is what humans want. Concluding, you, again, social media, friends and family, and upbrings, and then we have what? A circle, yes, a circle. It is all connected. Society can be considered an amount of people around you. And this, those people can influence your friends and family, and your friends and family influence you. So this is why our life works as a circle. And this is why we don't know, we not knowing ourselves works as a circle. We cannot change it now because this was the way we were taught, not to deal with feelings. But as I mentioned many times, this is not worth it. If you don't deal with your feelings, you're not going to understand it, or you're not going to, be, to have meaning in life. If you understand and be self-aware, not, not just means you will understand what you like or not, but you have this kind of self-perseverance, on, for example, how to deal with depression, or for example, how to deal when you're sad or you're angry, and you try to not get it f in a physical and verbal way. This is how people get mature. So what we learned from that, that we can change anything what we have done until now. We are adults, or in my case, I'm a teenager, and we can change the way our parents were taught about emotions. But of course, you can go, for example, to a psychotherapist and try to be more self-aware. I know sometimes it scares self-awareness, psychotherapists, someone reading you, but it is the best way to improve 
yourself and know what you're doing wrong or how to deal with your emotions. Sometimes, for example, if you don't like psychotherapists, you can try to do at your own by being more, um, to having more attention to your feelings or your breath, for example, meditation really works, okay? It is not a myth. And we need to change not only us, but also our society. We have to be less selfish and think that we are a circle. If you do something, you can change your friends and family, maybe change your way of upbringings and also your society so it can be more emotionally friendly. So this is why we, or in better case, you, uh, older generation, who doesn't think that dealing with emotions is worthy, starts to see emotions as essential starts to deal with teenagers or the next generation of actual babies or growing children that it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to express what you're feeling and also allow us to think. In other words, be humans. Uh, so that's it, thank you.